Okay, guys, before I get into the watch list here, real quick comment. On Tuesday, we have another free webinar, and this one I think you're going to love because it's all about timing your entry so you're green immediately. Um, for me, that is the entire basis of my trading method and my trading consistency and my success is sitting in cash unless and until I have a stock getting ready to hit one of the inflection points that we're going to talk about in the uh, in the free webinar. It'll be Tuesday night at 730. Find us on uh, Stock Twits or, or Twitter at Great Stock Picks on Twitter and um, scroll through my tweets. You'll find a link to register for the webinar or sign up for my email list on the website, greatstockpicks.com with an X. And there's a place to uh, put yourself on our mailing list, uh, signing up for free stock picks. I think that puts you on the mailing list. Anyway, um, the SPY today, as we said, uh, the FOMC was coming today, the FOMC announcement. And this is exactly, this is what it looked like, five minute candles. This is exactly, so there's the announcement. It tanks, rips higher. Bear with me a second here. Let's try that one more time. So you can see what happens. Looks like immediately it ripped down near the lows of the day, then ripped higher, then ripped lower, and then lower, right? Um, and really kind of was pretty ugly after that. So, um, you know, this to me is a lot of traders love the, uh, the volatility. To me, it's too unpredictable. It wouldn't have surprised me um, after this ripped down for it to go up, uh, you know, another another couple bucks. That wouldn't have surprised me. And also, this didn't surprise me. But you never know. This wouldn't have surprised me either to have it sell off like this and then all of a sudden rip to new highs. I've seen every combination of things on FOMC days. So since I have no clue what's going to happen um, and there's just chaos in the market, I just sidestep it. I just don't trade after that. Uh, I'll give you another example. Bank of America, usually a pretty calm stock, right? BAC, just rips higher on massive volume and then and then tanks before chopping all over the place, right? So anyway, it, to me, it's just best to wait uh, tomorrow. And we have what I call a reset, right? We've got a, a, a brand new day and we can just play the morning gappers, you know, and the watch list. So anyway, um, believe it or not, this ROKA, Caught my attention today just because of the it's not a huge volume spike but it is compared to the last i don't know week and a half two weeks and it's got nice support below so something might be brewing here this thing has made big spikes in the past here here a decent one here so um you know i don't have a trigger price for you but i think it's worth having on our radar vcel you probably saw this one today um gapped up and popped and then you know had pretty wide pretty pretty much of a wide range there um, on the day, massive volume. Um, I did make about 400 trading that one today. Uh, it just goes on watch tomorrow to see if we can get a setup. BCLI. Um, I had my best trade in this one today. Jane from the UK, one of my favorite members, because she has uh, made me a lot of money, right? Um, she alerted this when it looked like it looked like this, right? Talking about, hey, if this goes red to green, and I did get a question on Twitter, or my email, or something like. How can you call this red to green when it's already way above yesterday's close? It's already green. Um, and people have different definitions of red to green for me and my chat room. Red to green means it's going, the daily candle is going from a red daily candle, meaning it's trading below its open. So the daily candle is red. As it goes up through the open, picture the daily candle is now turning green. That's what red to green means to me, um, which means through the open. And Jane's idea was uh, this one, if it goes red to green, treating it like a typical gap play that we play, right? Um, so 239. And I actually didn't get filled till the two, the low 240s, um, but had a nice trade in it and actually traded this again, right? I sold some here and then on this flush back down, it chased me back out. So I made a lot less than if I had just sold it all up here. But um, then I got my big trade in it on this flag break, right? Got long again at 251, called it out over the mic at the same time, said, hey guys, flag break, anywhere below the high of day could work. And then it got a big move to, uh, man, almost 290, it went to 288. Plenty of volume, you can see massive volume there, plenty of liquidity to sell into. And ended up making almost 1300 on the day um, on this stock, BCLI. So that was pretty nice. Um, having said all that, it goes back on watch tomorrow because it. You know, in that ugly finish for the SPY, this thing closed pretty darn strong. So maybe we get a red to green or something like that in it tomorrow. C-O-O-L. We had this on Bounce Watch, um, and I never did catch a trade in it, but it did close strong, so I'm going to watch it again tomorrow. A-C-U-R. 
Um, okay, this one normally, we had this big pop here about four sessions ago, but the reason it's on my watch list because it's trading in a dollar five and after hours, I think it's worth watching. It, it had some news or something. So if this gaps up, um, you do have a catalyst if it breaks this high, right, which was a dollar 19, then it's, it's kind of in breakout territory. So um, we'll see if that one gaps up tomorrow. But the reason it's on my watch list is because of um, the after hours pop. SKLN. Um, one of our moderators and my partner on our trading course um, and also my partner in these webinars we do, uh, Wayne, uh, alerted this one today and it made a huge move and I did not get to participate. I was busy trading something else, but I'm going to show you Wayne's idea here. Let's go to fives. Now, Wayne pointed it out when it looked like this, basically. And I, I call this flagging because on ones it's cleaner, but I'm not going to switch to ones and have to scroll back over again. Um, I'm a little slower with these newer version of e-signal charts because I'm not used to them yet. Uh, I've only been using them for a few days. So um, SKLN was kind of flagging basically with the high of day still above. The reason I like the high of day still above, in other words, from this opening five minute candle, is if it breaks this flag, you look to the left, well, hey, that's, that's another potential catalyst, right? In a lot of my videos, you might hear me talk about stacked catalysts. Well, if this breaks 310, this little one, it was a one minute flag, it might just rip right through the, and light up the new high of day ticker, right? So there's your next catalyst. You've got 311, could easily get you to 316, and then maybe it's off to the races, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm happy for and a little bit jealous of Wayne and everyone else that caught that because I was doing something else, but that was the big one today. Um, I, I did pretty well in BCLI, but um, that could have been a monster one right there. Um, so anyway, it goes back on watch because it closed above its open again in a week afternoon for the market and you had this big spike back here you've had you know like oh i don't know a, a good two weeks of basing and now trying to break out so this is a good candidate and you can see it can move nicely that's another thing i look for in stocks is are they you know stodgy old dinosaurs that never move or do they make crazy moves at times because i want to be in one that, that can make a crazy move in my favor right idxg um put in a green candle today uh, it did give a setup today that we teach, but I missed it. Uh, I'm skillfully missing a lot of them, um, but you know what? I'm steadily grinding my account higher, and that's all that matters. Um, this one goes back on watch for tomorrow with a nice strong close and a weak tape, right? SSH, another one that's kind of an inside day today, but it's had a couple really big moves. This move, and then yesterday had a big move, and today just an inside day. So I mean, I really like it over today's high, over 58 cents. It might just head right back up to these highs. So um, keep this one on watch. SSH. I don't usually trade stuff under a buck, but that one's interesting to me. ZTO. Um, nice green candle today. This was on Bounce Watch if you watched my video last night. Um, I actually called it as an, the only idea I could find because it was so choppy early, right? Was after it kind of put in this flat top up here, right? Um, and so my idea was 1318 with like a 1299 stop. And I put that out when it looked like about like this, right? And then, um, you know, then lunchtime came upon us and it, it withered away. And then next thing you know, in the afternoon when I wasn't even paying attention, it did end up, I think, yeah, breaking through the highs, albeit not a huge move anyway. Uh, but it closed pretty strong again in a week tape. So let's watch for a follow through day of this bounce. Again, I think this is like the Chinese Federal Express and it's pretty beaten up since the IPO. You got a lower high, lower high, lower high. And this maybe is the last, excuse me, the last flush down. I mean, this thing's gonna find support one of these days. Maybe it continues to bounce tomorrow. Had a really nice bounce this day, by the way. Um, and we were watching it that day. All right, uh, APRI. Um, you know, you had this big pop. Now you've got two days lower and kind of a nice quiet day today. So I'm looking for a potential long in that one tomorrow. PACD. Um, I'll tell you why I'm a little skeptical on this one. It's because it's one of those lower priced oil and gas plays. Um, and you had this nice breakout here. Then you had the gap up and now three days lower. So normally I would love this. Um, you know, back down to the eight day, three days lower, especially if oil catches a bid. Um, the only reason I'm kind of shying away from this one is ORIG, which closed at 226, is trading at $1.83 right now. All the way down here, they reported in after hours. So with a stock in the same space, getting beat up on earnings um, makes me like PACD a whole lot less. All right, so I'll probably have it on a chart, but I'm not very excited about it. And then PHMD, had on bounce watch coming into today because it looked like this. And I thought, hey, huge move, three days lower on smaller volume. Well, then today, 
uh, kind of a big day down. So this just goes back, no trades in today. It just goes back on bounce watch, right? There is some um, consolidation right here. So, and you can see it did find support right in this area. So maybe it bounces tomorrow. So it goes on watch. We're also going to look for gappers in the morning. I'm going to leave it at that. Enjoy your evening, guys, and we'll see you all tomorrow.